Before continuing with web service integration, I'm going to change this project that I've been working on so that instead of displaying simple text, it uses a list. So I'm working in a new version of the project called Display List, where I've already made some code changes and added one asset. The asset is this layout file, itemflower.xml, in the Resource Layout folder. This layout is based on a layout that I used in the course Android SDK Essential Training. It's designed to be used with a list activity, a special kind of activity that knows how to display a list of data. This particular layout will display an image on the left and a text view on the right. And in this exercise, I'm just going to retrieve the data from the web service and display just the text. We'll save the image for later. In the main activity class, I've changed the class so it now extends list activity. And I've removed a couple of elements from the activity layout. Instead of a text view control, I now have a list view control. And it has an ID of at Android ID list, the required ID for list views that are used by the list activity class. I still have my progress bar widget that I added in a previous movie so that I can show the user that something's going on in the background. So here's the code that I need to add to make this all work. I have a new class called Flower Adapter. It extends Array Adapter and is specifically designed to work with the Flower class. That's my plain old Java object. For each item that's displayed, the getView method will be called. And I want to display the name of the flower in the text view object in this layout, item flower. Remember that the text view has an ID of text view one. That will make this code make sense. So first, I need to get a reference to the current flower object. I'll declare a new variable data typed as my POJO, flower, and I'll name it flower. And I'll get its reference by calling flowerList.get and I'll pass in the value of position. That's this parameter that's passed in when the getView method is called. Next, I'll get a reference to the text view. I'll declare a text view object. I'll name it TV. And I'll get its reference by calling view.findViewById and pass in the ID of the text view, r.id.textView1. And I'll cast that as text view. Finally, I'll set the text for the text view object with tv.setText, and I'll pass in flower.getName. So each time a new flower data object is being displayed, a new view will be created. The getView method will inflate the layout for the item in the list. It'll then go and get the reference to the current data object using the position, and then it'll get the name of the current flower object and display it in the text view. I'll remove this suppress warnings annotation, it's no longer needed, and save my changes. Now I'll go to the main activity class. In the main activity, I'll go to the method update display. This method used to have code that looped through the list of flower objects and displayed each of the flower's names, one line at a time, by simply appending to a text view. But now I'm going to use the flower adapter class and display this in an actual list. So I'll place the cursor after this comment, and I'll create an instance of my flower adapter class. I'll name it adapter, and I'll instantiate it with the constructor method. I'll pass in this as the context, the resource ID of my layout, r.layout.itemflower, and then I'll pass in flower list, the list of data objects that I want to display. Within that constructor, I'm taking that data and saving it as a field so I can easily get to the data later. Going back to main activity, now I'm ready to actually display the data. And I'll do that by calling the method setListAdapter, which is a member of the list activity class, and I'll pass in the adapter object. I'll save those changes and run the code.
And when I click Get Data, I'm now displaying the content in a list. I can scroll up and down easily to see all of the content. I'm still not displaying the images, which will also be downloaded from the web, but I'm successfully retrieving the data. In this case, using a JSON formatted web service, but I could just as easily retrieve the data using the XML version. So if you have this much code working, you're ready to go on to the next step, working with those binary resources, the images. The images are not specifically a part of the web service, but they're associated with it. And working with images that you download from the web in concert with the web service is a very common application requirement. So I'll show you how to handle that requirement in the next set of movies.